In this tutorial, we're going to be creating the object shown. This is really just to get used to the SOLIDWORKS interface and how things work. So let me close this down, and we're going to start a new uh, part. To do that, we go up to the Quick Access Toolbar and click on New. You can see we have choices of creating a new part, a new assembly, or a new drawing. We can also access SOLIDWORKS tutorials from here. So we're going to do a new part. So let's look around and see what SOLIDWORKS has. In the middle, this is where your part's going to be. Over here, we have the Feature Design Manager tree. Uh, it has several features that we'll go through in other tutorials. But basically, this is where you'll see all the steps that you've used to create the part. You also have three um, standard planes, so the front, top, and right. Uh, they highlight as you go over them. And we also have an origin. You can create other planes, but these are the default planes. All right, up at the top, we have, uh, like I said, the quick access toolbar, and then we have some pull down menus. You can see how they disappear and appear when I hover over the triangle. I usually like to pin them so that they're always showing. And then below that, this is the command manager. It has different commands, uh, different uh, ribbon tabs, sketch, feature. It depends on what you're doing, uh, where you go on this uh, manager. And then over on the right, we have the task pane. The first icon is the resources. The next one is the design library. This is where you can go get some standard parts. Uh, those are the two that you're going to be using most often. You can see the text to figure out what the other ones are. But let's go ahead and click on the resources. So there's a lot of things that you can do here. We have uh, tutorials. SOLIDWORKS has lots of tutorials that will step you through how to make a part. We have a student curriculum that you can go and look at. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and click off of that. And then up at the top is the uh, quick, or sorry, the uh, heads up view toolbar. It allows you to zoom in, zoom out, view your part in different ways, change its appearance. All right, and one of the most important things is the help. So if you click on this, you'll get a window where you can go and search for help on different commands. All right, so let's get started. So we already created a new part. And what we want to do first is to set the drafting standard and units. So we do that in the options window. So that's this little gear uh, looking thing. We click on that. And in the document properties, you can see drafting standard. So we want to use ANSI, definitely. Uh, this is our standard. Uh, it's also referred to as the ASME standard. Uh, but we don't want to use the ISO standard. And then we can click on units and change it to any units that we want and change the decimal places. In this tutorial, we're going to use inch, pound, second and use two decimal places. But you can see there are other decimal places we can choose. You'll also notice that there's just tons of other settings that you can mess around with in the document properties and the system options. So you can go through there and just kind of see what's available. All right, so now we want to save our file. So we'll save it, and we want to save it as cylinder. I've already got this file on my disk, so it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it. And yeah, I'll do that. All right, so now we're going to start a sketch. And to start a sketch, you either have to select a plane or a surface of a part. We don't have a part, so we'll select a plane. We'll do the top plane. So I'm going to click on the top plane, and you'll see how this toolbar um, shows up, showing different things that you can do to this plane. So we can sketch on it. We can show it or hide it, um, zoom. 
but we want to sketch on it. So this really is the easiest way to select a plane to sketch on. I'm going to get out here and show you another way though. I could just click on the right plane, go to sketch and select sketch here, but that takes more steps. So you'll find that you'll probably just use the pop-up toolbar. And you'll notice that the plane comes and you see a normal view of the plane. That means, you know, flat, flat on. And then you can start drawing. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can draw. Lines, rectangles, circles, uh, slots, splines, all that stuff. We're going to draw a circle. Now usually when you start drawing, something should be attached to the origin so that your drawing doesn't kind of float away. Um, so I'm going to start the center of my circle at the origin. You can see how that orange dot appears. That it's how I know I'm snapped to the origin. And then just draw a circle. Doesn't matter what size it is because we're going to dimension it. So to dimension it, we hit this smart dimension and click on the circle, pull out the dimension, and then enter a value. So we want it to be two inch diameter. Uh, if your units are set to inches, you don't need to type inch afterward. Just two and then enter. All right, so we have a circle. Now you'll notice that I'm still in the dimension command. If you don't want that anymore, just click the uh, green arrow. All right, so now we want to make this circle into a solid. So we go to the Feature tab and hit Extrude Base, and you can see a solid. You can enter a value, or you can pull on this arrow right here, but that's a little more less accurate. So I usually put in values. We want this to be one inch. So I'll go one, enter, and then hit Accept. All right, if you want to center your part, hit the F key, and there it centers it. If you want to zoom in and out, you just scroll your mouse button. All right, now we want to create another circle, but we want to do it on the top face of this part. So we're going to click on the top face. Again, a pop-up menu comes up, and we want to sketch on that top face. You notice that it didn't rotate this time. If you want to see it flat on, just hit Control-8, and you see it flat on. We're going to draw another circle attached to the origin. This one's going to be one inch diameter. And then we're going to extrude it again. So we're going to extrude this a half an inch. Now notice that it didn't rotate to the isometric view. You can rotate your part by pressing your uh, mouse wheel and then moving it. You can see how it's going to extrude. So we want to make this 0.5, there we go, accept it. All right, so it's uh, looking like a part now. There are different ways you can view your object. Um, so for example, I showed you that if you press your middle mouse button and move your mouse, it rotates. If you hit the Control-7 keys, it'll go back to the isometric. If you go up to view orientation here and click it, it gives you a view cube. So you can choose any side that you want to view. So you get a little preview of how it's going to look. You can view it from that side, the bottom side, top side, or at any angle that you like. And you uh, just click off of it when you're done. So if I want to view it from, let's say, this corner here. There you go. Doesn't look much different because it's circular. But to access, if you don't want to come up here and click that, to access the view cube, just hit the space bar and you can access it very quickly. And you'll notice that an orientation window comes up that allows you to do different things. You can divide your screen if you like, um, look at the front view, the right side view, back view, whatever you need. All right, so now let's uh, try doing a cut instead of an extrude. 
All right, we're going to draw on the right plane, the one that cuts the part right in the middle. I'm going to sketch on it. I'm going to do Control 8 so that I get a flat view of it. <clears throat> and then we're going to draw a shape using the line command. So again, you don't need to be, you know, worry about dimensions at the moment because we dimension afterward. So I'm going to click on dimension and put the dimensions that are shown in the tutorial. Now notice that the object right now is blue. That's because it's not constrained yet. I'm just putting sizes in, but it's not constrained to anything that is pre-existing. All right, so now i uh, put one last dimension in. Now I'm going to constrain it to pre-existing objects. Now the two cylinders are already constrained to the origin. So I'm going to constrain this object to the origin as well. And you'll notice that all the vertical lines turn black because now they're constrained. And I'm going to constrain to the bottom of the part. Now it's all black. So that means that if I take my mouse and drag it, I can't. I can't drag it at all. But if I take, let's say, one of these dimensions off, delete that one, and now I have some blue objects, I can drag it, right? So we don't want to be able to drag it because that can lead to mistakes. So I'm going to put that dimension back in. All right, now I want to cut a hole through it. Again, I'm going to rotate so we can see. You see how it's uh, cutting only to one side? Um, sometimes that's what you want, but in this case, we want to do all both. So we're going to cut all the way through the object in both directions. And there you go. All right, so in the tutorial, look at the different options that you have for the extrude and the extrude cut, because there's a lot of cool and neat things that you can do with it. All right, so the last thing you would do would be to save your part, and you're done.